Hi guys, welcome back. This video will be on producer surplus using the marginal cost approach. So basically, we already know that the producer surplus is a measure of the producer welfare because um, it measures that how better off the producers are since they are selling the product at a price that is higher than what the minimum they are willing to sell it for, right? So basically, it's measuring how good the producers are. Simple, right? And it's sort of the producer's happiness or you can say the measure of welfare or how better off they are. So for example, if a unit is um, costing the producers um, $6 because that's the marginal cost, we know that the marginal cost is the additional cost incurred on an additional unit. Since this video is based on producer surplus that is using the marginal cost approach, so I'll just brief you what marginal cost is since we all know that is the additional cost incurred on an additional unit and that additional cost would definitely be the variable cost. So the marginal cost is the variable cost as well. So, so since I am using, since I'm producing an additional unit at a cost of $6, um, as in the additional cost that is incurred is $6 um, and I'm selling that product at $10, so definitely my producer surplus would be $4 on a single unit, right? And remember that the higher the producer surplus, the more good it is for the firms and therefore we intu intuitively producers should be happy with the higher price as it is going to increase their producer surplus now remember that the producers guys will keep on producing an additional unit because that's the rule that's the rule for allocative efficiency for from the producer's perspective as long as the price is greater than or equal to the marginal cost for that unit right so as long as the price is more than the marginal cost and um or equal to the marginal cost, let's say. Um, so the producers would keep on producing an additional unit and that would involve a rational decision on based on, as in that would sort of be a rational decision for the producers, right? Now I'm gonna be, I've drawn a table here and let's see how this sort of works. Producer, producer surplus works with respect to marginal cost. So guys, for example, let's say that, you know, I'm producing chocolates and for the first unit uh, of chocolate, uh, the marginal cost is $1 and the market price is $5, which since the firm is a price taker, so the market price is consistent for all the units that we are producing since the firm is a price taker um, and is operating in a perfectly competitive market. So for example, if the marginal cost is $1, the producer surplus is $4 since the minimum that the producer is gonna sell it for or the minimum it is willing to accept uh, to produce uh, to sell, to produce and sell this unit is 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 one dollar. That's marginal cost, and the producer sells it for five dollars. So the producer surplus he's better off by four dollars. Similarly, we see that the, for the second unit, the marginal cost is two, and the marginal cost is going to increase due to the law of diminishing marginal returns, due to the law of increasing cost, due to the law of decreasing returns. That is the law of diminishing marginal returns, right? And the producer surplus falls to three, and then for the third unit, the marginal cost rises to three dollars, and five minus three would give us a producer surplus of two, and for the fourth unit, the marginal cost rises to four, and the minimum the producer will produce, uh, the minimum the producer is willing to accept is four dollars, while the price is five dollars, and the producer surplus over here is one dollar, right? So, and for the fifth unit, you can see that the marginal cost jumps to $5, while the price is also $5, but still, we said that the rule applies here that producers produce an additional unit only if the price is more greater than or equal to the marginal cost, right? Since the price over here equals to the marginal cost, right, it's exactly equal to the marginal cost, the producer would actually produce this unit because the minimum, because this is simply telling us the marginal cost is telling us the minimum the producer is willing to accept it for, and since the minimum the producer is willing to accept it for, as in to produce and sell it for, is $5, and the producer is actually getting $5. So the producer is getting what the producer is, the minimum that he's willing to, you know, uh, accept uh, the sale for. So he's getting that price. So that definitely he will produce and sell it, right? Although the producer surplus would be zero here, but still. Now, if we add all the producer surpluses up on all individual units, it's four plus three plus two plus one and gives us a producer surplus of $10 on producing and selling five units, right? Now, there's another way you can calculate producer surplus because what you can say is that if you produce and sell these five units and if you add all the price up, so basically you're selling five units and each dollar is worth five, so five dollars so basically you're getting a revenue of 25 dollars which is written over here 25 dollars you sum up the prices individually it will come up to 25 dollars and if you sum up the individual marginal cost of uh, producing an additional unit which is which is sort of the additional cost that is incurred on an additional unit 
that is the additional cost incurred on the first unit, on the second, on the third, on the fourth, on the fifth. So all the additional cost that is incurred on all each additional unit, if you sum that up, you will sort of get the total variable cost because the additional cost incurred on an ad additional unit, that is a marginal cost, is actually the variable cost, right? So if you sum all the individual marginal cost up, you will actually get the total variable cost of producing these uh, five units. So total variable cost, that is the total, total cost of producing these five units, that is the variable cost would be $15, and 25 minus 15 would give us, you know, $10. So basically, you're the, the cost of uh, producing, um, the variable cost of producing these units is $15, while you're sort of selling it for $25, and so the producer is sort of better off by $10. Now, guys, remember that this is not the profit, because in order to calculate the profit, you need to deduct fixed cost as well. So producer surplus is not equal to profit. From the producer surplus, you can deduct fixed cost, and then you will arrive at profit, but this is not the profit that we're calculating. So having said that, we can actually graphically represent this on uh, the diagram as well, and we can see that the supply curve is an upward sloping supply curve. So Basically, what so the area that is um, below the price and above the supply curve is representing producer surplus, and we've already discussed that in the initial uh, video on producer surplus as well. Now, since this video is based on marginal cost approach, so we know now the supply curve, guys, is basically your marginal cost curve as well, right? So each point on the supply curve is representing the marginal cost of that sort of of that particular unit, right? Now. Uh, since you're producing five units and each unit is being sold for five dollars, so if you multiply five by five, you get a total. So this box is going to tell you the total revenue that the producer has received, right? And if you deduct that from the, um, if you deduct that from the marginal cost, total marginal cost, which is the area that is under the supply curve. So the area that is under the supply curve is your total marginal cost, which is equal to your total variable cost, right? Um, for producing each of these units. So this entire area is your total variable cost, that is your total marginal cost for each additional unit, which is your equal to total variable cost. And since you, if you deduct that total from the total revenue, you get a producer surplus that is equivalent to this particular red area, right? So that's your producer surplus here, okay? And we know, so you can also say that the producer surplus is defined as the amount that producers are paid for a product less the total variable cost of production. And we know that total variable cost of production is shown by the area that is under the supply curve up to that particular output of five units, which is sort of representing the summation or sum of the marginal cost of producing each additional unit of output. So producers are better off by that area shown by the red area, right? So yeah, that's it, guys. That's it for this video. I'll see you all around in the next video. Until then, take care.